course I miss you, darling. This is the loneliest place on earth. Most exciting thing ever happens here is a day when it don't rain. Excuse me, darling, I got some work to do. What the heck is that? Get on in here, Pete. We got us a big old asteroid on a three-week collision course with Earth. has been named Attila, after the war leader of the Huns, who devastated Europe just before the fall of the Roman Empire. Attila was first spotted in a tracking station in Borneo. According to NASA sources, the probability of impact with Earth is 99%. Five, four, ignition. Boston Lowe said in the press conference last night. If the shuttle is the last hope of the human race, then it'll have to do the job, won't it? Wait a minute, folks. Let me introduce the landing team. Lutger Brink is a noted geologist. He'll evaluate our data on placement of the nuclear devices. We have to be accurate. The idea isn't to blow Attila to bits. If we did, some of the pieces would certainly hit Earth with devastating effect. And now I hardly have to introduce Maggie Robbins to you. She's probably the most well-known journalist in the world. Uh, Maggie, you're famous for having once said that you never put up with censorship in any form. Now you're under NASA command. Miss Robbins is a reporter by vocation, but on this mission she's... I think I can answer the question myself, Commander Lowe. Danny, I trained for this mission, and I have work to do in laying the nuclear charges. When I come home, I'll be a reporter and tell you all about it. But during the mission, I'm part of the team, and I will obey Commander Lowe like any good soldier. That may be the biggest news story of all. Maggie Robbins obeys orders. In going over your bios, I find that Professor Brink is also a noted archaeologist. While it's well known that Maggie is a prodigy at learning new languages, is this just coincidence? Not at all. We wanted the best and the brightest for this mission. Dr. Brink and Ms. Robbins are not narrow specialists. They are resourceful, widely educated, and creative thinkers. Does that apply to you too, Commander Lowe? My job is to keep everybody alive. I don't have to be brilliant, I just have to be careful. The other two crew members will remain with the shuttle. Ken Borden is the most experienced shuttle pilot we have. Cora Miles is our payload specialist. As you all know, she's a candidate for Congress, but we figured saving the planet is more important than campaigning. It's cheaper, too. Any parting message for the people of Earth? We have exactly one chance. And we've got to do it right. Let all your prayers be with us. Low here. Come on out, kids. The water's fine. 
Province here. Going independent. Welcome to the wonderful world of space. Don't bump into anything. <laughs> I'll be careful, Commander. Break here. Going independent. Howdy, Brink. Welcome to the place where geology and astronomy meet. A professor once told me, astronomers are geologists with clean hands and a squint. You going to quote him on that in some magazine, Robbins? I'm just part of the landing team right now, Commander Lowe. It's the pig. Payload specialist Miles needs to use the remote arm to release it. Robbins, this is Lowe. Do you read? Robin's here. I read you. Getting anything juicy for your first article? I'm not writing my article right now, Commander Lowe. This is all pretty dull so far, Robbins. I hope you can find something interesting for your lead. Commander Lowe, am I doing something wrong? No, I'm just trying to be friendly. And I'm trying to be a good crew member. Can't you forget for even one second that I'm a reporter? Just want to make sure you're having a wonderful time. I'm very, very happy, Commander Lowe. Have you looked up at the Earth yet, Robbins? Oh, is that big blue thing the Earth? Some people get vertigo when they realize that they're hanging upside down 200 miles over the ocean. Do some of them throw up? Is that what you want me to do? I thought it was something you might want to write about. I actually had a pretty good career as a writer before I had you to think up ideas for me, Commander. I just want you to be happy, Robbins, so you'll write nice things about us. I'm very, very happy, Commander Lowe. What do you think of our archaeologist, Brink? I'm very impressed with his experience. He headed the U.S. Geological Survey team that mapped the surface of Venus. He'll be taking a close look at the asteroid to make certain the detonation points they've chosen are suitable. See that big tool chest? We call it the pig. I've logged a hundred hours working with every tool in the pig, Commander Lowe. Lowe out. Frank, this is Lowe. Do you read? I read you, Lowe. What is it? Are you getting a good look at the asteroid, Brink? I have hardly looked at anything else, Commander. Have you noticed anything unusual? No one has ever been this close to an asteroid before, Commander. I cannot possibly know what is usual or unusual. Is there anything that should make us reconsider the placement of the charges? The original choice of quadrant seems adequate, Commander. Do you see any problems, Brink? As you Americans might say, Commander, we will kick Attila's butt. Happy to set foot on a new world, Brink? Attila is a very old world, Commander. It is merely new to us. Let me know if you see anything unusual with the asteroid. No problems yet, Commander. What do you think of our star reporter? Very unorthodox, bringing a reporter on a space mission. But she is very capable, and she writes interesting stories. Everything okay with the pig? Everything's fine as far as I can see, Commander. Miles can tell you more than I can. Low out. I'm here, boss. Are we in position, Ken? Attila's given us less gravity than I expected, but the attitude jets are compensating. You're saying Attila is less massive than we expected? Hey, maybe Attila's nothing but a big old bubble. How do we know what's inside an asteroid? You ready for us to park company, Ken? Everything's in position, boss. Any problem with us taking the pig now, Ken? Just tell Miles, and you can take the little squealer to market. Low out. Miles, this is low. Do you read? Yeah, 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 Boston. I'm on you. You, you wish. wish. In, In your, your dreams. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> How's the congressional campaign going without you? Well, my opponent is demanding equal time in space. With or without a suit? Just don't 
screw up the mission, Boston, and I'll be in Congress next January. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Till my opponent offers you more money. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Only if you move to Mississippi, Boston. We're ready when you are, Cora. Just give the word, Boston, and you got yourself a pig. Ready for the deployment of the free fall tool chest. Is the crew clear of the area? Crew is clear. Proceed. with the pig, Cora? Looking sweet, Boston. You just be good to my baby. Load a landing team. I'm taking the pig down to the surface. Follow me. You be good to my baby, Boston, you hear me? We'll be back soon, Cora. Try not to miss me too much. Low out. It's a specially designed explosive charge engineered to help move the asteroid into a safe orbit. It's the arming key for the explosives. It's like a jackhammer, but for space. Regulation NASA pocket shovel. Every astronaut should have one. Robbins, this is low. Robbins here. I read you. Kind of strange thinking of nuclear explosives as precision instruments, isn't it? I think it's a nice change, compared to thinking of them as weapons. Oh, I see. That's your story angle. Nukes to save the world instead of destroy it. That's way too long to be the headline, Commander. More likely it'll be, nukes save world. Or maybe, nukes blast Attila off course. I thought it would be space aliens plot to abduct astronauts, destroy Earth with giant rock. Apparently, my career is amusing to you, Commander. Why is it I can tease everybody on this crew except you? Because they know you like them, Commander. I like you, Robbins. No, you don't. Let's blow up a planetoid together sometime, Robbins. Oh, you think of the most romantic ideas. You're kidding. That's the first time I've teased you and you didn't bite my head off. That was the first time you didn't make fun of my profession. I'll bet you make the pig the hero of the story, Robbins. So far, it has the most attractive personality. I was making a joke, Robbins. I know, Commander. So was I. What will you call it? Interview with a pig? No. That's the title I'm using for the article about you. Low out. Low to Brink. Come in, Brink. Brink here. I read you. The explosive charges haven't been bumped or anything, have they, Brink? Alpha charge and beta charge are both doing fine, Commander. Low out. It's where explosive alpha should be placed. Let's see if we can clear up old Attila's complexion.
Nice and smooth now. Shuttle, this is low. We're placing the explosive in Quadrant 2. Yeah, acknowledged. Could you give me a hand with this break? I'll be right there, Commander Low. Excellent work, Brink. Ken, the charge is set. Instruments confirm. Hey, I'm just so proud of you boys. Look at the pretty red light, boys and girls. I'd say this charge is armed. rock right where I need to plant the nuke. Cora, Ken, I'm jamming the shovel in under the boulder, then using maximum down thrust to pry it up. Does that sound workable? Well, I'm a little short on data about the tensile strength of shovel handles in zero-g under maximum thrust conditions. In other words, who knows, it might work. Boss, be careful. If the handle breaks, maximum down thrust will smash you right into Attila. You know the saying. Whether the stone hits the glass or the glass hits the stone, it ain't gonna hurt the stone. Thanks for the encouragement, Ken. Frank, if this actually works, the boulder's going to come flying straight at you. Better fly clear. Thanks for the warning. Looks like it worked. Now, aren't you glad I made sure the tool chest had a shovel in it? My rule is, if you can pick it up, take it with you because you never know when you might need it. I have the same rule, Cora, but I thought it only applied to women in bars. If you can pick her up... <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Ken. You don't want to find yourself getting quoted as a sexist pig in Maggie's article. I'm not here to spy on you. Lighten up, Robbins. They're just teasing you. If they thought you were really a spy, they'd never talk freely on the open. Shuttle, this is low. Now placing the explosive on the base of the asteroid, Quadrant 3. Yeah, acknowledged. I need another hand here, Brink. Of course, Commander. This asteroid has a pair of landing lights now, kids. Stick a fork in us, we're done. Who writes your material, Commander? I get it all out of the newspapers, Robbins. Let's head back to the shuttle and watch Attila do the old fire dance. I'm here, boss. Both nukes are in place and armed. We made pretty good time, I think. Looks good, boss. Come on back inside for the fireworks. Confirm everybody inside. All in, Cora. All clear payload. All clear, landing team. All clear, shuttle. Confirm doors closed. Doors closed.
explosives armed. Houston gives us the go-ahead. Say when, boss. Do it. Now, let's see. Is it the big green triangle or the little red circle? Shut up and push, Ken. My baby's getting impatient. Here we go. We have detonation. Alpha and Beta. What are the instruments showing? Nothing big coming our way. What's the pig telling us, Cora? Attila's still in one piece. There's a lot of seismic bounds, some, some fracturing. We're stable again. A radioactivity in Quadrant One is well within the safe range. What does Houston say, Ken? Everything's go for a surface walk and your option. Then let's go, landing team. Let's see what Attila looks like after plastic surgery. Be careful, kids. Attila is more dangerous now than before we tamed him. Those were certainly profound first words to speak on Earth's new moon. I'm not making speeches, Roberts. I'm concerned about keeping everybody alive. Commander, I can collect rock samples later. Right now, I would like to get below the surface down into that tunnel. We're gonna do it eventually. We might as well do it now. You agree, Roberts? I'm game for it. I've called the pig. We'll send it on ahead to light the way. Remember, any rock may be loose, and any wall may collapse at any time. Please be careful, everyone. Cora, send down the pig, please. We'll need the light. something like this in a tunnel. Yes, yes, I think it's clear. Wherever Attila came from, there was someone there. Could this be part of some kind of message? Like the one NASA put in Voyager? If it's a message, I don't understand it. Whatever it is, we've got to tell Houston immediately. Negative, Robbins. I'm clamping down total security as of this moment. You've got to be kidding. You've been telling me all along you just want to be an ordinary member of the mission. I've had secret orders all along to look for any sign of alien presence on this rock. And now that we've found it, my instructions are clear. What I want to hear from both of you right now is I understand, Commander Lowe. I understand and agree, Commander Lowe. There is nothing to be gained from a premature announcement. Robin. I understand, Commander Lowe. Ken. Ken, Lowe here. I read you, boss. Tell Houston that I said Attila's a real hunt. What? That's some kind of joke. Just tell them, Gordon. You'll receive new communication protocols immediately afterward. Oh, cool. This is like a secret code. Just thank Cora. You're the only one in Congress who knows anything about this. Houston says the message is received and they're transmitting new codes. We're getting back to work down here, Ken. Low out. I'm giving this baby a little push. If that doesn't work, Commander, give it a big push. just dropped down inside something. The plate is gone? It's a small dark opening. I think you're right, Brink. The stone projection isn't natural. Yes, but what is it doing here?
I may be criticized for it later, but I'm gonna dig out one of these odd projections. It's your decision, Commander. Another one. I wish we could be sure we weren't destroying whatever message they meant us to receive. It seems to me that if they didn't mean us to push these metal plates, we wouldn't be able to push them. It's a small dark opening. One of the metal plates.
like someone turned me inside out twice. It's a little difficult to move now. That's because we've got gravity. Planet-type gravity. We're not inside the asteroid anymore. And the pressure is equalized. There's an atmosphere. Can we breathe it? Our suits are checking that automatically. Here we are. Yes, it's at least as breathable as the air in L.A. Of course, there's always the danger of airborne infectious agents. I don't think so. Alien microbes should be no threat to us. They have not evolved to make use of our cell structures. The oxygen in our suits won't last long anyway. I say we take them off and save the remaining oxygen for the return trip. If there is a return trip. The air tastes good. Hmm. Surprise, surprise. Attila was a spaceship all along. A starship. Faster than light. We're not in our own solar system. No planet but Earth has an atmosphere like this, and this ain't Earth. After so many years of bad TV shows and crackpots with phony pictures, here is the real proof. There is alien life. Load a cockpit, over. Load a payload, over. Yeah, I'd say we're out of range. Way out of range. I don't see any aliens coming to greet us. For all we know, it might have been a million years since these people sent out Attila, and they long since died out. I don't know about you, but I didn't pack a lunch. Or a can of pop. Well, we might as well look around and learn what we can about this place. We might be here a while. I guess this isn't a natural geological formation, right, Brink? Look how close the stones fit. Like ancient Peruvian masonry. So it's primitive. There was nothing primitive about ancient Peruvian masonry, Commander Lo. Hmm. With my luck, this is probably the alien equivalent of poison ivy. Brink. How are you doing, Brink? You mean apart from being trapped on an alien planet with no idea of how to get back? This is a pretty desolate place. Whoever once lived here, I think they are long since gone. So much dust. Undisturbed except by our own feet. Can you make any sense of what you see here? A good archaeologist doesn't expect to make sense of things until he's been digging at a site for years. We don't have years. Maybe years are all we have. I hope you can figure some way out of this place. I don't think we'll be able to climb these walls. In my years of studying rocks and ancient sites, I learned that sometimes the best way down is up, and sometimes the best way up is down. Yeah, well, I hope that made sense to you, because it sure didn't make any sense to me. Brink, how does Maggie seem to be holding up? She seems to be fine, Commander. I'm okay. We all have to watch out for each other. Thanks. Robbins. You doing okay? Oh, I'm fine. This is the greatest story of my life. The only trouble is, I have no way of telling it to anybody. This place is as desolate as the Midwest. Almost as desolate as the Midwest. Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Hmm. <laughs> If only I had ruby slippers. Maggie, does Brink look okay to you? So far, he looks fine. I'm okay, Commander. Thanks for your concern. We all have to watch out for each other. Thanks. Where are you going, Lo? I was gonna check for water, or some way out of here. I think we should remain together. Fine. Follow me. This is no longer a space expedition, Lo. This is an archaeological dig. Therefore, I am the obvious leader. Fine. Whenever we need to dig something up, you can use the shovel. In the meantime, our first business is to survive. 
Our second task is to get home. We need to work together, and I'm still the commander of this mission. You don't know any more about surviving on an alien world than I do. Boston is right, Ludger. He's the one with experience in survival, and we need someone in command. This is no time for a foolish power struggle. All right, I agree. For now. Do you think we could climb this slope? No use. It doesn't go up all the way to the top. The engravings on this wall, are they writing or decoration? You're asking us? Not just plants, but creatures too. I'm not an archaeologist, but these look like bones to me. But they are not lying where the animal died. They were placed here. Markers. A grave? Best guess. And now a home for those rat-like things. It looks like something is buried here. Are you just going to dig right in? With a shovel? You will destroy the site. I'm not doing archaeology right now, Brink. I'm looking for something to help get us home. Your name will live forever. As the bone-headed space hero who destroyed precious data at the first alien archaeological site. That's better than having my name live forever. As a commander of an expedition that disappeared and was never heard from again. Now get out of the way if you aren't going to help, Brink. This might take a while. What a fine accomplishment, Commander. Now we have a pile of meaningless dirt and bones. Maybe not. You never know when an alien bone will prove useful. Whatever creature these bones used to be, I don't think we've got anything like it on Earth. This is light, but it feels as strong as steel. What do you think? Was this the skull of a sentient being? Or a pet? Or a beast of burden? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's dead. It's a strange shaped jawbone. The teeth still look strong. Is anyone or anything alive? It seems someone had to have been here. Let's hope they're peaceful or gone. This alien technology is hopelessly ruined. These engines are enormous, but there is no evidence of any type of combustion. No scorching, no oxidation. The design of this ship is not consistent with the vast geometric structures we've encountered so far. So this ship is not from around here? Not in my opinion. Perhaps they were stranded here, much like us. It's a possibility.
Can you tell anything about what these people look like from the interior of their ship? All this rust. Corrosion. Perhaps animals have moved things around. Hard to know what we're looking at. Let me look. Try not to disturb anything. Well, I don't see any treasure, but there is something in here. When we get back, the engineers are going to have a field day trying to figure out how this worked. Some kind of device. I have no clue what it might be for. It's indicating to the right. We might need this wire later. I'm gonna see if I can pull it down. First, shouldn't you turn the power off of the breaker box? What? That was a joke, Lo. Oh, yeah. Ha. Huh. Stand back in case something comes down on our heads. Changing shapes, mathematical progressions of ever more complex polyhedrons. Next time I suggest pulling a wire. No, no, I'm glad you did. What could that have been? Not a random electrical discharge. Maybe it's a kind of computer display. Maybe to the aliens who piloted this ship it conveyed some meaningful information. But to me, it means absolutely nothing. It still might be useful. Did any of you see? Was this here before that thing appeared? Of course it was. Do you think an electrical field can carry a solid object? It's a rod, engraved, five geometric shapes. indicating to the left of me. seems to be pointing at this mound. With that device pointing at this mound, I suspect there might be something buried here. How scientific of you, Commander. Another random hole bulldozed by our fearless leader. Maybe not. I thought I saw something shining. An artifact. It looks like a bracelet. It looks like a bracelet.
I think we can safely say this is not a natural weather phenomenon. How about a mirage? Anyone voting for it being a mirage? It knew we were here. It was trying to tell us something, or show us something. Don't be too quick to anthropomorphize. How do we know what life looks like here? It might be alive, or it might be some kind of automatic guidance system. We triggered it in that ruined ship, and now it's leading us. You mean this is the last gasp of a holographic tour guide? Or the Port Authority. Maybe it's telling us we're under arrest. Come quietly or self-aiming lasers will toast us to cinders in 15 seconds. Stop it. Maybe you can think that's funny, but the last thing I need is some mischievous boy trying to give me the creeps. If I wanted to give you the creeps, I'd tell you that it was the ghost of a long-dead alien. How do you know it isn't a ghost? What? You think this is where aliens end up when they die? If it is, then this place better be hell, because it sure isn't my idea of heaven. Now you're starting to give me the creeps. I'm gonna see if I can enlarge the hole. Maybe there's something under here. Yeah, maybe something lives down in that hole. <laughs> the utterances of experts. The ground is soft here. Loose. I think this used to be an opening and over the years wind has filled it up with sand and dirt. Here, let me see. Yes, that's right. You're probably right. That means the ground is treacherous. It could be hollow under there. Commander, I think it's time for an archaeologist to do the digging. I'm used to dealing with drifted soil. The shovel is yours, Brink. Just be careful. The ground's pretty unstable. My feet kept sinking. My whole training is to be careful. Not to charge in with guns blazing. Finally, a good use for my extensive training. No! It's completely... I can't... No! Ah! Brink! I couldn't get to him in time. I couldn't. It happened too fast. Can we get down there? How long a drop is it? Looks like the rubble has formed a ramp. Follow me. Here he is. He's not moving. Brink. Boston. He's dead. I should have been the one digging. Then you'd be the dead one. It was my responsibility to. Brink and I are not children or trained monkeys. We're responsible adults. It could have been any of us, and there's not a thing you could have done to prevent it. But I... To lose Brink, and we've only been up here. Look, you can't keep me safe, and I can't keep you safe. So there's no particular reason for us to stay together. Our odds of getting back to Earth are better if we work separately on figuring this place out. I don't like the idea of splitting up. Why? Because we're safer together? Ask Brink about that. Because maybe I won't know what I'm seeing without you to help me understand it. If you find something interesting, the communicators still work. Till then, adios. Ciao. Sayonara. A Wiedersehen. Maggie, it's against every rule of military action for an officer to be separated from his command. Boston, this isn't a military action. And you don't have a command. There's just you and me, and we both know exactly the same amount about this situation, which is to say, nada, nothing, zip. If we suddenly find ourselves facing an army, then you're in command again. Until then, adios, ciao, sayonara, a Wiedersehen. Nobody likes you when you smart off like that.
Yeah. All my psychological tests as a kid said that I didn't work well with others. So this is what failure feels like. You could be irritating sometimes, but you sure didn't deserve to die. Looks like one of the control plates we found on Attila. Well, that probably wouldn't hurt, too. The plants seem to draw energy from my body and disperse it among all the plants. They must share a common root system. I don't think I want to kick this door in. This looks like a command center. It's an energized crystal. This crystal is lifeless. This hole is empty. From this vantage point, I can see a whole system of underwater tunnels. I see many undersea tunnels, all leading from the large central island to the smaller islands. I can see a tunnel that connects to the island I just came from. There's a crystalline tube stretching across the bottom of the sea. There's an undersea tunnel leading into the base of a nearby island. It's hot here, and it's glowing down there. Ten to one, it's the power source for this place. All I need to do now is to find the light switch, or the plug, or the fuse box, 
or whatever makes this thing work. An instruction manual might help. Maybe a map. And I could use a sandwich. And a hot jukebox and a cold beer. Or just a starship headed for home. Another one of these engraved sticks. What are they? Wands? Batons? Bludgeons? Maybe some kind of handheld computer game. With my luck, it's a hand grenade. There's a huge amount of energy flowing along this column. When this rock fell from the ceiling, it must have cracked open an energy conduit under the floor. So what is through this door? A death trap? A mad scientist with a pretty girl and a talking robot? An alien cafeteria? Why am I just standing here? After all, as Brink found out, the worst thing that can happen is you can take one wrong step and you're dead. So much for the cafeteria idea. Boston, are you there? 
They use geometric shapes as a kind of combination for the locks. Boston, you won't believe where I am. I'm in a place filled with alien technology, the most fantastic things I've ever seen. And the machines are working. What are they doing? I don't know yet. I mean, they're really alien. Like nothing I've seen before. Don't go too fast, Maggie. I'll be careful, Boston. But it's not like we have time to use correct scientific procedures to test these things. Where are you? How can I get to you? I wish I knew. It's a sure thing you can't get here the way I did. I slid through a low tunnel in the rock, and then it kind of got filled with debris when the roof collapsed. You could have been killed. Gee, I guess this isn't safe. But if we'd been together, whoever went through the crack second would definitely have been killed. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about coming to save me. I handled it just fine. Yeah, I guess you did. We're both doing okay, Boston. We'll find a way to connect up with each other when it matters. Uh, Maggie, good work. Thanks, Boston. Now I know what my pet hamster felt like. I need some help to pry this door open. Nothing could open this door. to take a chance on swimming in the same water with a large eel that may or may not think of her as dinner. So maybe I'll take my own advice and stay on dry land. down into the Nexus. Of course, that's how Brink died.
doesn't look safe to walk there. Bunch of displays set into the walls, inscriptions here and there. I'd say it looks like some kind of museum. Symbols written on a plate. Looks like an alphabet. crystals. I have two crystals. Could this be some sort of burial chamber? Another one of these engravings on a stick. That canister sure packs a punch. Boston! Maggie, I found you! I wasn't aware that I was missing. You know what I mean. I found a way to get where you are. Through the museum, back that way. That's nice, Boston. If that's the museum, then I guess this is the library. I found out how to open doors back in the Nexus. There's a tram that leads out here. Look, Boston, I think it's great you're finding things out, but I'm trying to concentrate here. I feel like I'm so close to making sense of some of this stuff, and I just want to stay here and keep working. All right? Sure, of course. I just... anyway, I know where to find you, and you know how to get out of here if you want to. Thanks. Yes. 
When I learn something, I'll call you on the box, okay? All right. All right, yes. I, I won't bug you anymore right now. I've decided that has to be a control console for a data retrieval system. When I use the controls, different inscriptions appear, sometimes different languages. If English comes up, I'll let you know. Robbins, have you deciphered any of the wall engravings yet? Yeah, it's the user manual to an old mainframe computer. Have you deciphered any of the wall engravings yet? It's a cookbook. This whole place is just a really big kitchen. As irritating as he was sometimes, I really miss having Brink around. There's nothing you could have done. Let it go. I'm sorry Brink is dead, but I don't think it's right for you to blame me for it. I don't blame you. It's not safe for us to be separated. It's not safe for us to be together, either. In fact, Boston, it's just plain not safe. Thanks. Screens must be part of one large computer. Robbins. I'm sorry that I can't protect against every possible accident, but that doesn't mean it isn't better for us to stay together. Would you stop taking this personally, Boston? I'm doing my best to decipher the inscriptions that are all over the place here. Would you be any good at that? No. So please, go do what you're good at, and I'll stay where I am and do what I can do best. How are you doing with your data retrieval? I'm retrieving. I'm just not understanding. But you're pretty sure it's their language. I don't know. Just like the museum you found, I think this library was meant to be used by lots of different species. I think this language may have been especially designed to be easy to translate. If it's easy, why is it taking so long? It's easy compared to translating a genuinely alien language that you've never heard spoken aloud. Give me a break, Boston. I think I've got a handle on a couple of the symbols but I have to test it out and see if it makes sense. I'm thinking that maybe we should consider teaming up again. Why? I think the answer to getting home is here in these displays. You go out and explore like you have been, and I'll work at getting us home. When I figure it out, I'll take you with me. No charge. Do you think it's possible to raise the dead? Spiritually, yes. I've witnessed many ceremonies. Physically rejuvenate, I'm not sure. Why? Oh, probably nothing. I found this in the museum. Can you read it? It's not the same set of symbols I'm finding in the database here. I don't think it's designed for strangers to be able to read it. I wish you could read this inscription. I keep thinking that it really matters. Give me a chance to get a handle on their language first. I'll give your inscriptions a try when I can. You won't believe what I found, Maggie. The central island and the five rock spires around it aren't just connected by underwater trams. There are also light bridges leading from the spires to this amazingly transparent crystal above the center island. A bridge made from light? I know, it doesn't make any sense, but it's true. Their technology is so far advanced beyond ours that I don't know if anything could surprise me now. If they can make bridges out of light, you have to wonder if they can make anything else. You mean, light beer? I was thinking more of a lighthouse. Maggie, I found a plate like the ones in the asteroid that triggered our journey here. For all we know, any plates we find might send us on a voyage to the opposite edge of the galaxy. Tell you what, I'll keep looking for more of them and you decipher that language so we can read the directions. Great. You get to look for metal things lying around on the ground while I have to decode a completely alien language without any information about how they think or what they might be writing about. Yeah, that's a fair division of labor. There's no doubt about it, Maggie. These ghosts are trying to guide us. Well, I wish one of them would come here and help me translate these inscriptions. Thanks.
knows if this will even work. Even if these really are the same crystals I saw resurrecting an alien in that museum display, they weren't designed for humans, but it's worth a shot. for several hours. <laughs> you Americans, always exaggerating. I assure you, Brink, no pulse, no breath, dead. But I found a couple of life crystals in a museum, and from a display there, I got an idea of how to use them. Where's the crystal? I have to see it. I wasn't sure it would work on a human being. Our cellular structures must be very similar. Boston, it didn't just bring me to life. It brought me to life. I feel more powerful, more energetic, more alive than I've ever felt before. Maggie, do you read me? Yes, I do. I hope this is important. I think so. Brink isn't dead anymore, Maggie. You have a very sick sense of humor. Goodbye. No, wait, I'm serious. Deadly serious. Brink! I can't believe it. It was a crystal I found in the museum. The display there showed it bringing someone back to life. So I tried it. A crystal that heals the dead. If we ever get back home, this will change the world. It'll change everything. It's not just being alive again, Maggie. I feel perfect. I feel like I never knew what good health was until today. Now it's all the more important we find a way home. It's always kind of important to me. Keep exploring, Boston. I'll get back to work on the language. You got it, Maggie. Brink. You still feel okay, Brink? It's almost worth falling through holes on alien planets if you feel this good afterward. This place is as empty as an ancient ruin. But at the same time, almost everything is still in working order. I know what you mean. This must have been how the bear's house felt to Goldilocks. They just stepped away for a moment. They'll be back any time. Do you think Maggie can learn an alien language? She's very intuitive. If she used a crystal, she could learn anything. Maggie's found the library, or that's what we think it is. Can she read the language already? She's working on it. She has mastered the library controls. Well, even if we can't find a way to get home, at least she may learn enough to help us stay alive here. What do you think the chances are that scientists back on Earth will be able to figure out these life crystals and make more? They have to, that's all. You have no idea how good it feels to have such strength surging through my body. And not just my body. My mind has never been so alert. We have to find more of these crystals if we can. More and more of them. I got this inscription from the museum. What do you think? I think that's Maggie's department. I don't want to be bothered with things like this. I couldn't believe it when I first realized that these aliens made bridges out of light. What I can't believe is that you are able to bring yourself to take that first step your eyes open for any metal plates like the ones we found back on Attila. I think if we find the right ones, they may fit in a triangular alcove in the Nexus. And if they do fit, what would happen? I have no idea, Brink, but I still think it's worth searching for them. The ghost we saw that led us to that hole you fell through. I saw another one at the museum spire. A museum guide? Whatever these ghosts are, I think they're trying to lead us to something. Ah, but are they leading us somewhere we want to go? Thanks.
Frank, would you give me a hand with this? Sure. On three. One, two, three. That was the longest visit from a ghost yet. The whole display centered on this basin. It's full of crystals. Are these the life crystals? Like the one you used to bring me back to life? They look like it. Then it couldn't be more clear. These life crystals are the reason they brought us to this world. They have found the secret of life, and they want to share. Weren't you watching, Brink? I don't care what language you speak, that ghost shaped itself like a skull. It was warning us, these crystals are dangerous. It was the symbol of death, Lo. These crystals are the antidote for death, that's what it meant. What if there are side effects? Did you think of that? The side effect is that I feel better than I ever felt before. If you had used a life crystal on yourself, your mind would also be as clear as mine. And you'd see that there is nothing more important than getting these crystals and using them. Brink, I think you're wrong. I think we need to be careful. These aliens are kind and good, Commander. They have given us a gift. Yeah? Well, if this is all so perfect, where are these aliens? Maybe they've moved on to a higher plane of existence. Or maybe they're all dead. <laughs> See how badly your brain is working. How could they be dead? They invented these life crystals. Commander, I feel sorry for you. Still tied down by an ordinary mind and ordinary fears. But I feel too good to want to argue with you. Believe what you want. I'm taking as many of these crystals as I can carry. Well, I'm gonna take some for study back on Earth. I'm just not gonna use them. But you will, Commander. Maybe I should take one more life crystal. Canister. Didn't I see a picture of something like this in one of the museum displays? run off. He wasn't acting very rational when we found a big supply of life crystals. 
I'm afraid maybe those things are addictive. Or they altered his personality or something. A ghost tried to warn us, but Rick was feeling too cocky to listen to good advice. Just when this place starts looking benign, it finds new ways to be dangerous. Anyway, I'm going on without him. I can't think of anything else to do. I'll try to contact him now and then, see if he's willing to talk. Thanks, Maggie. I'm beginning to take this personally. Nobody wants to stay with me. Maybe it's my deodorant. I think it failed somewhere back there on Attila. You just need a little something to make you complete, my friend. How about a little alien explosive device? Now that the water is safe for swimming, I think it's time to see what's in that underwater cave. Thank you. 
Uh-oh. The other trams came as soon as I called them. Maybe there are some controls somewhere. First time I ever did the wave all by myself. That should have turned on another light bridge, and it didn't. Bummer. I guess when you abandon machinery long enough, it's going to get out of adjustment. Just needs a little adjustment.
It's a glowing blue rod. Yeah, right. Like I'm gonna stick my hand in some crack in the rock on an alien planet. There's a glow coming from inside the crevice, but I can't see what it's coming from. things have been going, I can pretty much bet that whatever that little beast just stole, I'm gonna want it really badly in a minute or two. It's missing a part. A short metal dowel. A thin metal plate with a button on it. Just unidentifiable junk left by that critter. There's something moving in here. Scavengers have picked these ribs clean, but the animal can't have been dead very long because the rib cage is still holding together. That's a nice fit. Place for everything. If only I had some bait for this trap, but I'll just have to play sheepdog. There's something moving in here. Now I've got you. If I let you out, you'll head for the place where you hide nice shiny machinery parts. The only trouble is, how am I gonna follow you? Roam free, wherever your thieving little heart desires. The last time I was small enough to get into a cave that size, I was four years old. Sorry, friend, but your little house is about to get a big front door. That looks big enough to squeeze through. It's got to be right under here. This is where the tracker's pointing. What if I hadn't brought this shovel along? No, that's not worth thinking about.
The critter sure didn't like that. He took off down one of his tunnels. Now maybe I can get the door open. Thin metal rod. Now, with any luck, this will work. Now, let's get this thing closed up and see if it works. Open sesame. The scepter seems to have an electrical charge. The scepter seems to have an electrical charge. Another one of these engraved sticks.
Let's see if we can pry the cover off. Yeah, it's a corroded mess in here. Some of the connections have been broken, but it's not getting any power. Let's see if we can get something flowing from this broken conduit on the floor, if I don't electrocute myself in the process. Should have been an electrician. I can't move this thing with my bare hands. It's half buried in dirt and rubble. Let's see if this plate can be moved. Could this be some sort of burial chamber? It's a roughly carved hole in the wall. What purpose could this have had? There's light seeping through from outside. If only I could see better. That should hold it. There's something smooth under the dirt. A lens. Light must pass through it down into... It's the lens I uncovered. Just needs a little adjustment. Okay, so maybe it needs a little more adjustment.
Looks like the warranty must have run out on this light bridge. If at first you don't succeed, it still doesn't work. clear up there. Here you are, Brink. You haven't been answering. I was busy. Trying to concentrate on my work. I don't have time for interruptions. In other words, you want me to go away. Those are the right words. Go away. like some pretty badly deteriorated machinery. Brink. What's the project you're working on here? You're not a scientist. There's no way you could understand it. Oh, I get it. I can figure out alien technologies, turn the power on, work the tram system, adjust the light bridge lenses, repair broken door control panels, and even resurrect one dead scientist. But no, I'd never understand your work. I know you mean well, Commander Lowe, but I'm not working at the level of ordinary human beings right now. Frank, I'm worried about your health. Don't be. I've never felt better. Your behavior isn't rational. What do you know about my behavior? What do you know about my rationality? No one has ever been healthier or more rational than I am right now. Maggie's worried about you. Okay, I am too. I'm fine, Commander. I've never felt better. But we're just... I am fine! Maggie's work on data retrieval is going well. Then go talk to Maggie about it. I'm worried that these life crystals may have side effects. The only side effect is the envy of people who haven't used them. Have you used more of them? Their effect on health and intelligence increases with each use. What about their effect on sanity? These life crystals are the most important technology ever created. They are the answer to everything. With all your newfound brilliance, Brink, can you make any sense out of this? I don't have time to analyze every meaningless bit of debris you pick up and carry around with you, Commander Low. These light bridges link the spires. It's a lot faster than using the trams. I'm so happy for you. I found a bunch of these metal plates. When we've got them all, maybe we can go home. You remember home, don't you, Brink? Earth, family, friends, food. You're doing very well, Commander Lowe. By all means, go find the rest of the metal plates. Go quickly. Go now. I don't know what you're doing right now, Brink, but those ghosts had things they wanted us to do and we need to get home, and you're not doing either one. What I'm doing is more important, but I'll never accomplish anything while I have incessant interruptions.
Amazing map system. You don't even have to refold it when you're done. So there is more to that crypt than I first thought. Another broken light bridge. Just needs a little adjustment. Another broken light bridge. Okay, so maybe it needs a little more adjustment. Another broken light bridge. It still doesn't work. Must be something wrong inside the control panel. So this is what's in the guts of these machines. Pretty impressive for someone who never took a class in alien physics. Another broken light bridge. If at first you don't succeed, No! Why is that door closing? He didn't steal that part again, did he? I'm trapped in here? Ha! The controls still work on this side.
I thought those moons were in a synchronous orbit. What could have caused the moons to move? I worry this statue is life-sized. I hope I don't get kicked out for destroying the exhibit. Suddenly we've got guard dogs. Where did he come from anyway? Look, it's the ugly twins. Teach you guys not to mess with Boston Low, Space Commander. I can't get it open. A life crystal fell from this slot and resurrected that guardian creature. The door evaporated when the engraving touched the slot. This is the engraving we found in the shipwreck. The one the first ghost gave us. This must be where the ghost wanted us to come all along. Maggie, I found something. It's far below the tomb, past some pretty ugly guards. A dead alien sealed inside a crystal pyramid. Sounds like they went to a lot of trouble to hide it. Must have been important to them. A king or something. Or it terrified them. Remember, this is the land of the life crystals. Dead doesn't necessarily mean dead dead. Maybe they were trying to keep it from being found and revived. But this is where the ghost wanted us to go. The key to the last door was the key that the first ghost showed us, back in the ruined spaceship. Still, you don't have a key to the pyramid, right? Besides, how do you know the ghost is our friend? Brink died by digging where the ghost pointed. I hate not having enough information. I'm working as fast as I can to get this stuff translated. I'm so close I can taste it. Fine, keep working. Call me if you think of anything helpful. He's very tall, or I'm very short. I wish I didn't keep thinking of the term bite size. Please be friendly. I hope you're friendly. I'm certainly friendly. Let's all be friends. How does it feel to be alive again after all these years? I can't believe I said something so lame. 
Well, hey, thanks. It's been great talking to you. So long. We should do this again sometime. Kalatisia Nea Um. I better tell Maggie about this. Maggie. Come in, Maggie. Yes? What? Maggie, you won't believe what just happened. Boston, I think I've got it. I've got the language. I can read this stuff now. Can you speak it? Because I've got this. Well, take this inscription here. I'm pretty sure it's talking about... Maggie? My mind must be playing tricks on me. What were you saying about... Oh! What are you? What do you want? What's happening? What's going on? Boston! Frank! Anybody! Maggie! Brink, come in. Wherever you are, we need you. Something's happened to Maggie. Damn. What are you doing here, Lo? I don't want you here. Something happened to Maggie. She needs our help. Then go help her. What I'm doing here is important. Hey, if we felt that way about you, you'd still be dead. You're the tough guy, Lo. You're the hero. Go do your hero activities and let me do the science. think you are doing Go away. I can't be any clearer. What kind of contraption has Brink made here? Brink. Maggie's in trouble. I'm sorry to hear of this. I will miss Maggie a great deal. Maggie's in trouble. Then go help her! What should we do about Maggie? You go look for her, I stay here and work. Get your priorities straight. We're talking about Maggie's life here. What do you know about life? And if she's killed, so what? We just bring her back better than ever. are up on the ceiling. What do I have that can reach clear up there? Come on, guys. Let's get a look at you. No! Go away!
You thief! Give those back! I will, Brink. After you help me find Maggie. I'm not going to waste one moment on such a meaningless task. Yes, you will, Brink. If you ever want these life crystals back. You're a miserable bully, Low. Typical military mind. Pushing other people around. Right. So follow me and do as you're told. Is that rational enough for you? Is that you? Are you all right? Oh. How can she be all right? She's bound up in that web. Robbins. Maggie, I'll try to think of something to free you. Don't take too long. I think that thing likes me. Thanks. It looks like a great sealing something off. I go there, it's lunchtime. It is lunchtime. Break. Unless we want to end up where Maggie is, we've got to get by this thing. The obvious plan is for one of us to distract him while the other one slips by. Maybe you are thinking better, Brink. You want to sneak or distract? I'll be the diversion. Come here, you phlegm, carapace, slime-faced, mucus-brained, furry-legged abductor of luminously intelligent but pulchritudinous earth women. Lo, you idiot! Why are you standing there? I'm still trying to figure out what you said. Move your silly buttocks, you fool! Austin, where are you going? I'm over here. Don't leave me. Pouring through that hole at a tremendous rate. At this point, I'm ready to try any damn thing.
Where were you? This monster has me trapped. Boston? Where have you been? I've diverted some of the water from the falls. I thought some of it might flow through here and wash the monster away. Well, instead, the monster's got Brink trapped up there, and I'm still stuck down here. I think the water I diverted from the waterfall is flowing right to that grave. What is that down there by you, Maggie? It looks like a grate sealing something off. It's a grate sealing something off. What are you doing, Boston? I think the water I diverted from the waterfall is flowing right to that grate. There should be a lot of pressure here. I'll remember that if I need a bath. Thanks. If you can lure the monster over toward it, then when Maggie unclogs the grate, the water I diverted will hit it like a fire. This is seriously your plan? Do you have a better one? Maggie, can you get the grate open? Has anybody thought of the fact that if it does spout water like a fire hose, I'm right here? That's a good point, Maggie. Hold on tight. How do I hold on tight when I'm unclogging a grate? That's why you get the big bucks. Do it, then. Just do it. It's only my life, anyway. Come on, you ponderous exoskeleton. You cocoon-eating lobster face, cave-dwelling arthropoidal elementary sphincter muscle! How's my hair? You're worried about your... I was joking, Boston. You know, like you strong, manly types do when you just about get killed. Maggie's safe now. I satisfied our little deal. So give me my crystals and let me get back to work. Brink, it's time for us to work together on... I said give them to me! Take one more step closer, Maggie, and you'll wish you were back with that giant lobster. sure is weird. Now what? I've been getting the feeling that the ghosts want us to help them. As if they were stuck and wanted out. Stuck how? Well, the library console seemed to indicate that they may have left this world for another. What if they want to come back, but can't? I don't know. How will we go about helping, assuming that's what they want, and they wouldn't need us when they got back? Beats me. I'm just interpreting. Robbins, what do you think of our situation now, Maggie? You want the truth, Boston? I thought I had faced reality when Brink died. But when that monster carried me off, I finally understood what it means to be in an alien place. Nothing here is going to go the way we expect it. There's no guarantee there even is a way home. We have had some help from the ghosts. Help? They have their own ideas of what they want us to do. They don't care whether we get home or not. But I do, and you do, so we're not giving up. Oh, I know. I'll keep on searching and trying to understand. Even if I die here, I'll at least know something about the place before I croak, right? I guess that's a comfort. You still hanging in there? I'm okay, Boston. Don't worry about me. You were starting to tell me something before Bob the Lobster came to pick you up for your date. Just a sample of what I was reading. Nothing significant. What mattered is that I could understand it. I've caught on to how their language works. 
I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get tired. I've done a lot of digging. And I've done so much reading, my eyes ache. As worried as I am for Brink, I can't help feeling a little angry at him. He's wacko, nuts, out of his mind with greed. He's not himself. It's those damn crystals. You handled that whole business with the grape pretty well, Maggie. I hate to admit it, but it was a good idea you had. Not everybody thinks of diverting a waterfall. Do you have any idea what it was you did to attract the thing to you? I don't wear perfume, and heaven knows this outfit isn't exactly alluring. I was just sitting there. Apparently, that's enough. That's usually enough for very lonely men on Earth. As for this monster, I'd just as soon not have another date like that anytime soon. When I called you before you were kidnapped, I was trying to tell you that it worked. I revived the alien. Was it angry? Glad? He didn't kill me, if that's what you mean. He talked to me, but I didn't understand anything he said. Maggie, we've got to find a way to communicate with the alien inventor. I know, Boston. He's the only one who can answer our questions. He's also the only one who knows for sure how to get us home. I never would have found out anything from the map room if there hadn't been all those engraved keys lying around. Almost as if they were left for us. Only intelligent beings would have been able to figure out how to use them. Maggie, that's the sweetest thing you've ever said to me. I meant any being over the intellectual level of, say, a baboon. Oh, now you're making me blush. I still can't believe you were able to decode an alien tongue. I didn't say I was fluent, and they designed it so foreigners like me could decode it. After seeing what they've done to Brink, we'd better think long and hard before we start duplicating these back on Earth. Don't worry, we're probably never going back there. And even if we do, I doubt anyone will ever be able to figure out this alien science. Now that you can read the library inscriptions, can you make any sense out of this? It didn't even look like the same language to me before. But now I can see the relationship between this writing and the things I read in the library. What does it say? It seems to be talking about an important thing, I don't know what, that was hidden. Any hints about where? On the other side of the hole, so that none may enter. Then it tells how to, um, pull back this part of entrance. Whatever that means. It's pretty vague. There are some things that man was not meant to understand. Yeah, but this one even woman is having a hard time with. Have you learned anything about those metal plates? The shapes are all significant in their written language. They're also rich with symbolism in their culture. But you have no clue what they have to do with navigation, right? That's right. I'm a clue-free zone on that one. Where are those ghosts when you really need them? They only show up when they think they need us. Thanks.
Here's where my alien education either pays off or we die. Die? As long as I don't accidentally offend him, we'll be okay. Akrash Park. He says, open your mouth, which is their way of saying, speak. You do the talking, Maggie, so you can understand each other. Speak. Why was your tomb so carefully hidden? So only the most persistent, the most clever, and therefore the most dangerous of visitors would find me. Why has your body been preserved so carefully? Since all the evil in this place was my fault, I chose to be its guardian forever. If what you did was bad, why did the museum displays give you so much honor? There was a time when my creations were thought to be good. I believed it myself, or I would never have created them. How long will you remain here? Until the last of my mistakes is rectified, or until the life crystals lose their power out of miserable death. We want to go home. That is the wish of all living creatures. It is a vain wish. For there is no true home. All intelligence wanders and has no rest. The probe you sent out brought us here. We want to go back to our home planet. Another one of our terrible mistakes. We sent out those probes when we thought we had found the glorious secrets of the universe. We could not call them back. Thus, I remain here to warn all those who come in answer to an invitation we wish we had not sent. Warning us won't do any good unless we can get back home to Earth to tell other humans. There are two ways to protect your planet. One is if you return and warn them to stay away. The other is if you never return at all. Which warning do you think will be more effective? Tell us how to get back to Earth. I beg you. If my people could return from Space Time 6 where they have gone, they would rebuild the starport. They would make a crystal ship which would take you back to your planet. But they will never find their way back home. There's water everywhere in these islands. Waterfalls, pools, and the sea all around. We love the water. But now my people live in an eternal desert. Neither drinking nor thirsting. If only they could thirst again, and then drink. If only they could dive into the sea and hear the roaring of the waterfall. The creatures who live here now, did you people know of them or did they come later? Millions of years have passed since then. What once were pets or companions have followed their own evolutionary paths. They have become as beautiful or as terrible, as clever or as stupid as it was in them to be. The monster who captured me, are there any more of them? That one did not evolve. It was made. And there are as many of them as are needed. Who are you, Honored One? The bringer of misfortune. Please, tell me who you are. I am the doer who undoes, the creator who uncreates. And yet, I would gladly be the destroyer who undestroys, the dangerous one who protects. Speak plainly. Tell us who you are. Once, I was hailed as the greatest mind my people ever produced. I tried to bring them power and happiness. I gave them power to leave this world, to leave their bodies, to enter an existence as pure mind, eternally perfect. But I could not give them the power to return and reclaim their abandoned bodies, their decaying world. They are lost and cannot return. Have you a name? I had a name when I was alive. 
Now that I am again and again dead, what need have I for names? My body is now so ancient that the crystals scarcely have power over me. I rise for a few minutes, and then I fall again. Soon, I will cease to rise at all. Only then will my grief end. I want no name or memory to live after me. The map helped us find you. Did you create it? It was created by those who now wish only to find themselves. The language of the library was a great achievement. It was so clear and surprisingly easy to learn. The greater the idea, the simpler and clearer the language needed to express it. Did you invent the life crystals? To raise the dead is the greatest achievement we've seen. What raises the dead can debase the living. Are there side effects to the crystals? What the crystals create is not a life, but a slave. So when the life crystals restore you, you aren't really alive? They restore the cells and the organs, but take away all that made the life worth living. Then why did you make them? Our society became obsessed with living eternally. I underestimated the breadth and danger of the obsession. The crystals are the second worst mistake I made. Why is this inscription in another kind of writing? I did not write it. I would not have written it. I can read it, but the meaning isn't clear. It speaks of something hidden. It was the first achievement on the road to my greatest error, the one that condemned my people. The light bridges are magnificent. We never dreamed the people could walk on light. Ah, yes. We were happily surprised at how convenient those light strands turned out to be. If we had known, we would not have bothered to build the trams. If you were surprised that the lights could be used as bridges, what did you create them for? When all the bridges are complete, the eye will see. When you say the eye will see, you aren't talking about our eyes, are you? An eye that can see the three dimensions of time, as well as the three dimensions of space. It will show you beauty beyond belief. But once you have seen space-time six, Will you ever see space-time for... again? The eye may be open, but the mind hasn't the strength to see. The metal plates we found, what are they? They are authority and power. Each shape has a meaning. And when they are fitted together, they have a new meaning. If we put the control plates in the triangle, what will happen? You will open the door to beauty without boundaries. And to trouble without end. What are the ghosts we saw? Are they alive? My people all travel to the realm of space-time six, where three dimensions of time join to the three dimensions of space. It is indescribably beautiful. But they can build nothing there. They can create nothing. They just exist. On and on with empty lives and hearts that long for this hard and stony world. The ghosts are your people, then. Their connection to this world is so slight. They can disturb the energy in the air. They can make themselves visible for a few moments. But they can't build anything here. They will live forever, but it is not life. Is it impossible for your people to come back? It takes enormous strength of will to leave that place and come back to this one. They have all tried. They have all failed. And now they have been away too long. They have lost the physical memory of how to live here in space-time 4. 
Why did the ghost lead us to you? Some of them foolishly hope that if I help you open the gateway again, you might have the strength to lead them home, to let them remake their bodies here. But I am sure that all that would happen is you, too, would be lost in space-time six. Thank you for helping us. I will only have helped you when you give up your foolish plan. We're not giving up. My only consolation is that true death comes closer with each dying. Good job of translating, Maggie. He speaks very slowly and clearly, but I'm also pretty damn good. It's shimmery, a light that doesn't seem real, as if it's just on the edge of existence. It makes me think of something. Something I saw earlier. Or maybe I read it. Robbins. Can you look at this inscription, Maggie? Does it say anything that might help? It wasn't clear to me before, but now I can see. Boston, it exactly describes that strange field of almost light. What does it say? It's a set of instructions. Now it makes perfect sense. I just twist this. Everything's so simple when you read the directions. If we didn't know better, we'd think that island had been there for a million years.
This island was brought back from another dimension. What was so important that they left us exact instructions on how to get here? Maybe that metal plate over there. That's the fourth one. If it's like the metal plates on Attila, these four should fit together in that triangle matrix. Yes, but there's no guarantee that putting them together will take us anywhere we want to go. You have the most cheerful thoughts, Ms. Robbins. If you had been abducted by a monster and then half drowned, you might be pessimistic too. But you lived, didn't you? And your hair looks terrific again. You sure know how to make a girl feel good. We'd better go find Brink again, in case these metal plates do the job. He threatened to kill me the last time I saw him. Maybe it would be safer if we leave him and send an expedition back to get him later. An armed expedition. There's no guarantee we'll ever get back. For all we know, this is a one-way trip. You're right. We can't leave him. He scares me, Boston. Worse than the monster. They're both just hungry for something. But Brink is smarter. More dangerous. We're smart, too. Let's go. That was a powerful one. Commander Low, can you hear me? Brink, we're looking for you. We've got the last of the metal plates and we... Listen to me, Commander. I'm trapped. I need your help. Where are you? It's near one of the light bridges. An arched bridge over a waterfall and then into a crevice in the rock. You must have been there. You're the one who's been turning on all the light bridges, aren't you? Hold tight, we're on our way. Hold tight? Very funny. You just got your hand jammed in the rock? I thought you were in real trouble, Brink. Uh, when would it be real trouble, Commander? When it's your hand? I don't go sticking my hand in the cracks. I was reaching for a life crystal, and then the rock shifted. My circulation is cut off. No blood is getting to my hand. You can't pull me out, Commander. 
Don't leave me to die here! Even if you have to cut off my hand! Don't be so dramatic, Brink. Nobody's going to cut off your hand. Don't make promises you might not be able to keep, Maggie. Are you serious? He's just got a stuck hand. It's a race to see whether gangrene kills him before he dies of thirst or starvation. You'd cut it off. Of course he would. The military trains you to recognize necessity and do it. It would be easier if I had anything to cut it with. Chew it off then! Oh, I would, Brank. But human teeth can't bite through bone. After all that's happened to us, this may be the most horrible. Do something, Commander! Do it now! You're going to saw off his hand with a jawbone? The teeth are razor sharp. What about anesthetic? Do it, Commander! Brace yourself, Brink. I can't believe you endured so much pain without fainting. I'm fine. But I need more crystals. Come with us to the Triangle Matrix. We've got all the metal plates. You think it's gonna take us home? You don't know where it's going to take you. I'd rather gather more life crystals. What if it does take us home, Brink? What if we can't come back and get you? Do you want to stay here forever? Then what will happen to your research into the life crystals? Yes, I see your point. I'll go with you to try out these metal plates. But if it doesn't get us home, then you two will stop interfering with me from then on. All right? You agree we have a deal? Agreed. All right, all right. That should do it. Do what? What's happening? Nothing is happening, that's what. That's not exactly nothing, Brink. It's a door. You think Earth is on the other side? I think nothing is on the other side. What did you expect? The Tooth Fairy to come and fly us all home? The door opened. Let's go see what's in there. We had a deal. I came, these metal plates did not take us home, and now you will have to leave me alone forever. You gave me your word, and I expect you to keep it. He is definitely insane. Is that your opinion as a journalist? It's my opinion as a sane person.
I saw something like this in the museum display. This machine was the greatest of the inventor's achievements. What does it do? I haven't the faintest idea. Do you think it might send us home? Right now, it's doing nothing. Looks like there's a part missing here. There's a gap. Robbins. We've got to try and turn on the inventor's machine. It's the only way to find out what it does. What do we do? Search all these islands for a part when we don't even know what it looks like? Where are all those helpful hints now? The hints were about things they deliberately hid to keep them safe. But this missing part, what if it was stolen or just corroded away? Then all of this would be for nothing. Boston, somebody knows what the missing part does and maybe even where it is. Well, I don't know. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about somebody who was sealed in a crystal pyramid. Thanks. It's a row of crystalline devices. Sorry, Bird. You'll have to find a new home. The machine in your laboratory, what does it do? 
Where the lights all shine, it opens the eye. The eye. Does that mean the crystal at the meeting place of the light bridges? The machine generated this eye. The eye sees into all space and time. And where the eye sees, the mind can fly. Was this eye the doorway into the place where your people went? A door that can be crossed only one way. You don't know that. If someone has a strong enough tie to reality... You think you are stronger than all my people? Even they, the strongest race known, could not overcome the temptation before it was too late. If we bring your people back to this world, then they can build a starship to take us home to Earth. It's our only chance. Maybe we'll fail, but you must let us try. Since you think you are stronger and wiser than my people, I will let you have the fruit of your pride. I will tell you how to find the peace I hid, if you know how to ask. But it will cost you more than you ever imagined. Please, don't play any more games with us. Where is the missing piece? You cannot understand what will begin if you activate the eye. You cannot bear to pay what it will cost you. Yes, you've warned us. Now where is the peace? Go to the map with this message and see what it shows you. I have said enough. The island we found, where was it hidden? It left this reality, but only a little way. It can come back, because it never fully left. The island moves in and out of our reality? It loses substance with every passage. We thought we could take our world with us into space time six. It could not be done. When something leaves our reality, where does it go? To a place where time is infinite in all directions. But because it does not move along a single line, it can never be predicted or controlled. Those who go there from here cannot change anything. They are nothing but observers. Forever. Thank you for helping us. Help yourselves by giving up. Never look into the impossible eye. You don't have the strength to return from that place.
So that's where the part is. Assuming he gave us the right code. This place is as creepy as the forest behind my house when I was a kid. Maggie, come on across. I wish I knew what's going to happen when I get this piece back in place. Where have you been? Where have we been? I need your crystals. All of them. Right now! Come on, Brink. How many crystals can one man use? Not for me, you fools. I need them for my machine. For science. Research! Give them to me! Machine? What are you talking about? I'm through talking! I'm not going to let anybody stand between me and the greatest scientific achievement in history!
I only have these few crystals left, Brink, but I'll be glad to share some of them if you want. All of them! You didn't share anything, Lo. I took them! And it's a good thing you didn't fight me. I would have killed you to get these. You would have tried. You two will be nothing but a footnote in the annals of my achievements. He didn't damage the machine part, did he? Away from here! I won't let you break my life crystal machine! We don't want to break anything. My machine isn't working yet. Yes, gloat if you want to. I've studied all the inscriptions. Maggie's not the only one who can decipher strange languages. I followed the plans I found, but there's still something missing. And without it, the machine won't work. So if you think you can steal my life crystals again, Commander Lo, think again. I'll kill you first. And believe me, no one will ever revive you. Actually, you robbed me twice, and I only robbed you once. So you're still one ahead. Don't joke with me! Don't joke with him, Boston. Brink. I think I know what piece is missing from your machine. How can you know anything about this? You're not a scientist. You're just a strutting tin soldier. I think it's the same piece that the eye generator needed. I think it's the key to all this technology. The alien inventor hid it because without it, none of the machines he considers dangerous will work. Why would the creator of life crystals think they were dangerous? Because the crystals make you feel so good that they take over your life. All you care about is getting more of them. He said it was the second worst mistake he'd made. And the worst mistake? The eye. So you and Maggie, you keep telling me I'm crazy. <laughs> but you plan to make an even worse mistake. I'll make you a deal, Brink. Yes, like the deal you made before. I keep my part, but you go back on it. I didn't go back on it, I just wanted to talk about it with you first. No deals with liars and thieves. Brink, you need what I have to make your machine work. But if it works, then you'll have plenty of life crystals, right? You could share them with us and it wouldn't cost you anything, right? If you have the missing part, yes. That's my deal. Your machine, my part. 50-50 on the life crystals. I know you plan to cheat me. We won't even come near the machine when it's running. You divide up the life crystals. Then what's to stop me from keeping them all? Because I am trained as a military man, Brink. 
And if I ever actually decide to fight you, I don't care how strong and healthy you are. You will lose. And then I will take them all. Got it? Get your missing part and put it in my machine. Even liars and thieves can bargain, as long as they watch each other very carefully. Half the life crystals, Brink. Remember? You don't scare me, you hairless monkey. It fits perfectly. This is how the aliens designed the life crystal machine to work. Nothing's happening. Yes, it is. It's vibrating. Be patient. Who knows how fast it's supposed to work? We'll just have to wait. Suits me fine. We'll split them 50-50, right? Of course. 50-50. Look, there's one. And another! Two. Is that all? Just two? I need more than two. I don't know about that, Brink, but it's a sure thing I need more than one. You still have all the crystals you stole from me and every other place on these islands. Don't touch them! 50-50, you said, Brink. Well, you must have hundreds of life crystals. It's not even 50-50 if I take these two. I knew you were a liar and a cheat. You weren't gonna let me have even one of these. I'll make the machine even better. It will produce more. Not till we're gone, it won't. I need that machine part to run the eye generator. You will take nothing from this machine, you lying thief! Once the eye is working, you can either come back with us to Earth, or you can stay here, take the part out of the eye generator, and put it back in your own machine. Just have a little patience. No! My machine is stopping! You've wrecked my machine! You're a dead man! Brink, please. We don't have to fight. You can have the part back after we're done with it. Everything you say is a lie! Maggie, tell him. If you say a word, Maggie, I'll kill you too! Brink, don't make me hurt you. You won't hurt me when you're dead! Frank! Oh, Maggie, please believe me. I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want him dead. It wasn't Brink who died here. Brink died when he fell down the hole when we first arrived. What just fell over the cliff was someone else. Someone alien. Created by those death crystals. Maggie, are we making an even worse mistake by activating the eye? Staying in this world any longer than we have to, that's the worst mistake we could make. We've got to do anything we can to survive. But what if we die trying? Don't you get it, Boston? This place is worse than death. I'd rather die than stay here.
The alien was right. This thing has already killed one of us, but it's back in place. The crystals Brink died for. It's a row of crystalline devices. Robbins. You're the one who read the alien books. What exactly happens when we turn it on with enough life crystals in it? It would have taken me years to read everything, Boston. And I didn't understand half of what I read. But there's no doubt that this machine is dangerous. The alien warned us it might cost us more than we expected. What does that mean? It might mean that just turning on the machine might kill us. You mean he booby-trapped the thing? I mean that the machine may draw on more than life crystals. It may drain the life out of whoever uses it. Then I'm running the controls. Don't be absurd. It might do nothing, too. Or it could kill whoever isn't at the controls. I just want to tell you. No goodbyes. We're gonna make it home together, Maggie. I'm not sentimental, Boston. I wasn't going to say goodbye. I just want you to promise me something. After you saw me break every promise I made to Brink, you want me to make another one to you? What happened with Brink couldn't be helped, Boston. I know you'll keep your word with me. What's the promise? If I die, and you live, don't use any life crystals on me. Don't revive me. Do you understand? Are you sure? I saw what Brink became. I don't want that to happen to me. You wouldn't be saving Maggie Robbins. You'd be creating a monster with my memories, my face. Don't do it. Promise me. I promise, Maggie. And vice versa, okay? All right. And now you tell me the truth about something, Maggie. Are you sure you didn't find out somewhere that something bad happens to the person at the controls of this machine? Boston, I don't know any more than you do about what will happen when I switch this thing on. If that's a lie, I'm gonna be really ticked off, Maggie. Yeah, I know. Here we go!
I should have known the inventor would have one more trick up his sleeve. That was the inventor's last chance to stop me. I will get out into Space Time 6. I will bring the people of this place back home, and they will build me a starship that will take me back to Earth. This is the real test. Can a practical guy from Earth do what all the builders of this place failed to do? Can I go into space time six and still find my way back to reality? Only one way to find out. It's beautiful. The guy could get lost here real easy. No. No, I'm not going any farther into this place. I'm staying here, where I can get back out again. You are as strong as we hoped, human. I can understand you. In Space Time 6, all living minds communicate perfectly. You stand at the doorway, human. You show us all the pathway back to life, to reality, to a place where we will someday die, yes, but we will have a life before we die. Every past and future, I can see them all, but which one is real? Go back now, human. Take me home. My people have their bodies, their bones, their lives again. We owe you a great debt, Commander Lo. All I want, now that my friends are dead, is to go back to Earth and tell the story of how they died. Why not let them tell their own story? I wish. You knew the way home, but I know all the other paths through time and space. Wait! Don't go back there! I have brought you a gift. Maggie! Frank! You're alive again! We were lost, but this being found us and led us back. Maggie, I thought I'd lost you forever. So you really didn't try to resurrect me with the crystals? No, I... I promised you. And besides, what the crystals bring back from death, it wouldn't have been you. I know, Boston. You kept your word. And yet, you did find a way to bring me back from death. It wasn't me, but I'm glad you're here. And I'm free of the madness of the crystals, too. You did it, Lo. No, it was our friend here. No, the credit belongs to you. We once revered a great inventor because he opened the door to unchanging eternity. But you open the passageway back into true life. All I am is a guy who wants to get back home. Already my people are preparing a great crystal starship to take you there. But we can come back, can't we? You and any others who wish to come. You are a young people, strong and full of hope and passion. We have much to teach you, and you have much to share with us as well. There will be friendship between our species forever. I hope you're right. Not all human beings are as, uh, nice as us. Oh, I know that. All young species are alike that way. But don't worry. 
If any of your people try to pick a fight, we'll mash them like bugs. How reassuring. The ship is almost ready. Go home and tell your people what has been accomplished here. Telling the people, that's Maggie's job. And getting us home, that was yours. You did it, Boston. Thank you, Boston. We all thank you, Boston Low.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>